there are some truly great ideas in comics that are an integral part of a character's life. Such as Batman having a Batcave. It's a classic part of the Batman mythos, and one doesn't exist without the other. And so you'd naturally assume that it came from the comics, as Batman's just always had a Batcave. But in fact, the Batcave was actually made by the movie Serial Series back in 1943. They made the Batcave for somewhere secret for Batman to be, and to have his private crime lab and gadgets. Whereas before, it was just Batman in Wayne Manor, and he had a secret tunnel to a shed where the Batmobile was kept. And DC liked the idea of the Batcave so much that they put it permanently in the comics. Which makes perfect sense now, as it's hard to even imagine Batman not having a Batcave. And there are a lot more cases of TV and movie writers coming up with ideas before the comics did. In fact, Kryptonite, one of the most famous aspects of Superman's mythos, originated in the Superman radio show again in 1943, and it didn't appear in a published comic until 1949. And it's not just ideas. Characters have also been created in TV and other media before they are adopted into the comics, and this video is going to go over a few of them. Harley Quinn Let's start with the most famous TV created character, and one of the most well known DC characters that have ever existed. She was originally created for Batman the Animated Series, before she was adopted into the comics. Now Harley was originally made simply to be the Joker's henchman slash girlfriend, and that's basically all. To begin with, she didn't even have that many lines. But as the series went on, her character grew, and she became more fleshed out, especially in the episode Mad Love, where we see her entire origin, and all of this made her a lot more interesting, until the modern day now, where she is almost more famous than the Joker. And it's hard to imagine that she wasn't made in the comics, since she is an integral part of the Joker's story and the Batman mythos. But TV made her first. Jimmy Olsen Now, not all of the characters on this list were made in television. In Jimmy Olsen's case, he first appeared in the Superman radio show on the 15th of April way back in 1940. Basically because Superman needed someone to talk to. It was a radio show after all, so everything had to be explained and described by voice. And later on, as the character grew in popularity, he was added to the Superman comics. However, with that being said, there was a character in the background of Action Comics number 6, which was released in 1928, and it's since been said that this character was Jimmy Olsen, and that he appeared in this comic before he appeared on the radio show. So some argue that this means he was made in the comics first. But in truth, the character was made on the radio series, and then DC incorporated him into the comics, and said it was just this unexplored character, because, well, why not? You both recycle the character design, and the comic fans feel like they already knew the character before the others did. It's a win-win. And Superman's boss, Perry White, was also created by the radio series in 1940, and he later that same year made his comic debut in Superman number 7. Terry McGuinness the show Batman Beyond saw the mantle of Batman passed on from Bruce Wayne to Terry McGuinness, but Terry's character was created in 1999 entirely for the show, and he had no ties to the comics whatsoever. Then later on in Batman number 700, there was an alternate version of Terry McGuinness put into the comics, but it wasn't until 2011 that the version of Terry McGuinness from the DC animated universe became a full-fledged DC character and he has since appeared and starred in several different comic lines, both through the New 52 and now into the present day Rebirth continuity. Livewire Livewire is actually one of the better characters to appear on Superman the Animated Series. The show had a host of supervillains, and most of them were actually quite well written. She was a woman who was trying to make it in a man's world, and in order to win she had to be more aggressive and louder than all the men around her. Now to be fair, these days that has become a bit of a cliché. And to be fair, back in the 90s, it was kind of on its way to becoming a cliché. But it wasn't that unoriginal when it was used. And it's still a great story and a set of motivations. She basically wants to make it in this world, but the world is always fighting against her. But even with the deck stacked against her, she still continues to fight on. Which is something we can all relate to in one way or another. And most recently, this character has appeared in the CW TV show Supergirl. Though personally I prefer the one in Superman the Animated Series, as I think they did the character much much better, but to each their own. John Diggle John Diggle was created entirely for the Arrowverse, and appeared in the pilot episode of Arrow way back in 2012. He starts as Oliver Queen's bodyguard, and then later becomes his friend and another superhero, as both the hero Spartan, and he even replaces Green Arrow himself when Oliver Queen was unavailable to do so. 
And though this character was made for TV, he has since been adapted into the main DC universe. Now, originally his appearances were just linked to tie-in comics to the Arrowverse. But later on, he was added to the main Green Arrow comic. This was in the New 52 run back in 2013. Though the character was not very like the TV version. But he does still continue to this day after the 2016 DC comic Rebirth, and he still features regularly in Green Arrow's comic series. Rene Montoya Rene is a Gotham City detective and is probably best known for being Batwoman's girlfriend, which is actually kind of a big deal, as there aren't that many openly gay characters in DC Comics, although they are adding more and more as time goes on. And she is definitely one of the more interesting ones. Her character was created in 1992 for Batman the Animated Series. I was actually first introduced to her in the original 52 series, where she becomes Question and eventually reconnects with her ex, Batwoman, and it's actually a pretty good story. And she's most recently been in the Telltale Batman series as a police officer and then later promoted to a detective. And of course, she is set to appear in the live action film Birds of Prey. And most likely, she'll make a few appearances in the new CW series Batwoman. X23 X23's most famous appearance is probably in the film Logan, where she is an angry little Mexican girl who was cloned from Wolverine's DNA. And she was raised as a lab rat, and that's pretty similar to her original origin. She was first made for the TV show X-Men Evolution in 2013, and she didn't appear in comics till 2014 in the comic NYX. And NYX is actually quite a good comic, though to be fair I don't think they used X-23 to her full advantage, as she's a little generic and doesn't really have much of a character. Now X-23 was cloned from Wolverine and trained to be a deadly assassin, and she blamed Wolverine for everything that she had been put through and she wanted to kill him. And to be fair to her, she was pretty much tortured from day one. In fact, in the comics, her superpowers of healing were activated by poisoning her with radiation, which meant if she hadn't activated her powers then, she would have died, and it would have been insanely painful. Though eventually, Wolverine was able to talk reason into X-23, and instead of hunting him down and killing him, she instead decides to hunt down those who did actually clone her and did actually hurt her and kill them. And for those of you who are wondering why Wolverine's clone would be female, it's actually quite simple. Women have the paired chromosomes XX, and men's chromosomes are the pairs XY, meaning men are half female. And the DNA sample they had of Wolverine's was damaged, and the Y chromosome wasn't possible to use in the cloning. But the X chromosome was fine, so they decided to double up the X chromosome and make a Wolverine clone that would be female which is complicated and nearly impossible to do, as any geneticist would tell you, which is why the first 22 clones died, but the 23rd one lived, which is why she's called X-23. She's actually a pretty interesting character, and if you ever get a chance to read the two miniseries of her origin, you definitely should, because they're actually amazing reads. And that is the list of characters who are made in other media before the comics adopted them. And they are far from the only ones, they're just the most interesting ones, at least in my opinion. But who are your favourite TV created characters? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.